You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. Cause the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave Sick 
Lord's gracious and compassionate, yeah, yeah, slow to anger and rich in love. And the Lord is good to all, He is compassionate for all. Thank you. 
back to the first song.
sing about it than right. the other things that I read in the word what he did and then act upon it. Amen. And it says in Acts chapter 2, it said, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, and has it fully come? Yeah. Yeah, it has. Yeah. And they were all with one accord in one place. Are we in one accord? Yeah. If you're not, it's real quick. It yeah. just takes one second to say, Lord, I'm in accord. Yeah. I'm in agreement with what's going on here. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house. And it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I'm so glad that they, Jesus didn't say, oh, you're not in church and you can't do that. Oh, you are in church and you can't pray in tongues. But it just said that they were gathered together. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. And so I believe that gives us permission to pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're not talking to each other. We are talking to God. And it's, we can speak to God in our own language, but we can speak to God in as far superior language. And we can talk to him, directly to him. And one thing awesome about that is that the devil doesn't understand. Yeah. And sometimes I get mixed up about that. But I heard Brother Copeland say it again last night. Yeah. And he says, the devil can't understand you when you pray in tongues. So that's awesome. Yeah. You know, because he, he likes to make you doubt sometimes. And you're like, can you really or can you not? <laughs> you know, because one says he can, the other one says he can. Uh, uh, uh. But he can't. Amen? Amen? So that's why he doesn't want us to pray in tongues. Because he just doesn't know what's going on, and he wants to be in on what's going on. Amen. And you know, he also amen. comes to church. Yes, yeah. amen. Yeah. amen. So let's pray in tongues. Let's magnify God. Hallelujah. to God. Amen? Amen? That's what the Lord is looking for, a thankful heart, a heart that's thankful and grateful. So God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. And he said when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, great power, great power came upon them. And then a little later it said great power, great grace, and no lack came upon them. And it just increased and just increased. So the, the book, you know, it said, the song we're singing, says, the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You know, he's not the same if you don't believe it. Amen. He's not the same if you won't receive it. He's not the same if you just say, well, that happened then and it's not for now. He won't be the same. But if you believe it, he's still the same. And so we say, Father, stretch forth your hand. Lord, that signs and wonders may be done through the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. For we magnify Jesus tonight. We magnify you, Lord. We praise you. We honor you. We worship you tonight, God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, we just get our expectors up there. That, Lord, something good is going to happen tonight. Something great is going to happen tonight. Father, we pray for the spirit of revival to follow. We honor you, God. Lord, you said pray that the spirit of revival will fall. So, Father, we're asking you. We're asking you, Lord, let the spirit of revival fall on us, O oh God. Lord, let it fall on this city. Let it fall on this province. Let it fall on this nation of Canada. And Lord, let it fall on the world. Let it fall, Lord God. And Lord, where you've already begun, Lord, we're, we want to jump in with that. Lord, we want to jump in with the great things that you're already doing, God. 
And so, Lord, we humble ourselves before you. We yield ourselves to you. We believe you, God. We believe that the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. Yes, and, Father, we thank you. He lives inside of us. He lives inside of us for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we have the greater one living inside of us. And, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you. that, And because of that, we don't have to leave here depressed and lame and blind and sick and disgusted and discouraged. But, Lord, we can leave here knowing that the greater one is in us, the Holy Ghost, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, dwells and reigns in our mortal bodies. And so, Lord, we lay hold on that power tonight. And we say that same power that rose Jesus Christ, that Holy Ghost power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, it dwells and it reigns in my mortal body. You say your mortal body. Amen. Amen. It says the righteous are bold as a lion. Don't be saying, well, I, I, I really don't know. Say, I'm bold and the Holy Ghost lives inside of me. And when I speak his word, God will confirm it with signs and wonders following. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We can never thank you enough, God. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just obey you, hallelujah. Just like when Joshua walked, he said, just take one step, because you haven't gone this way before. The Lord, you like to do a new thing. I'm so glad you don't like boring things. I'm so glad you don't repeat every Sunday night. It's the same thing here. But Lord, you do something new tonight. You do something glorious tonight, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You do something glorious tonight, Lord. For we magnify you. We praise you. Why don't you just stand up and praise the Lord? Just stand up. Because you know what? That's an act of reverence to the king. For the king is here. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you. We just praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. Lord, our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you, Lord. We look to you, God, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Tonight we're looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Show that I'm a sick yoda ramande. Kiora baba ba shangara da di kolama. Rene mo sotara kiandana. Lord, we bless your name. We worship your holy name. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Holy Spirit, just come pour out on us tonight. We magnify you. We hunger for you. We thirst for you. Lord, we magnify you. We praise you, God. Lord, our eyes are on you. It's not on any person, but Lord, it's you. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. It's you, Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. We're looking unto Jesus. Lambra shan de beish de keish de kore kore grande e la bronda. I tomara va sangara va kore va randa va shanda. Kila morosa banda la dei. Lord, we magnify you. We magnify you. We praise you, God. We look to you, Jesus. We look to you, Jesus. Hola brava va sangara va kosha na la mondo, 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 brenda, benda e la dita roma sonda. Lord, as we magnify you, Father, we just believe the Holy Ghost is touching lives tonight, touching bodies tonight, touching tonight, healing tonight, delivering, setting free. Hallelujah. For the Spirit of the Lord is not upon me. He's in me. He is in you. The Spirit of the Lord is in us tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we magnify you, we praise you, we worship you tonight. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we're just laying the groundwork for tonight. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. We magnify you.
magnify you, Lord. You are good, Lord. You are good. See why you got to pray in tongues? Because you, you just run out of English words real fast trying to bless the Lord. Rombo bobo shaka rambra veje keshe kora rombo rombo sandra veje kete kora kora grande lambra shambra veje keshe kora rombo mombar va siki ara rabondo rava shate lombro shande esa kora roma shaka rabondo rika Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We're building ourselves up, Lord. We're building ourselves up. We're giving you praise well. We magnify you, Lord. We just take time to worship you a little bit more. Lord, we worship you in song. We worship you in tongues. We worship you with our understanding. We just worship you and we give you, Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, as we worship you. Lord, you're doing great things. You're turning things you're around. So we worship you tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that when we're here worshiping you, you're over there doing that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to praise the Lord. And we praise you, God. Lord, you're our rock, our stronghold, our refuge, our shelter. You are our God. We look to you tonight, Lord. Our eyes are on you, God, and our faces are not ashamed because you are our defender, our deliverer, our healer, our savior, our God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Through our God, we shall do valiantly, for it is he who pushes back the enemy. And we can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. For God is in us. Who can be against us? What shall we say to these things? You got things coming against you tonight? The scripture says, what do you say to these things? What are you saying to these things? If God be for you, who can be against you? If you have symptoms in your body, you better talk to those things. Romans 8, 31 says, what shall we say to these things? What do you say? Hallelujah. We say God is for us. Amen.
Glory, glory, glory. Praise you, we magnify you. Lord, like we sang earlier tonight, you won't leave here like you came. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we, we don't want to leave the same. We want to leave different. We want to leave better than when we came in. And so we will allow you to do things in our hearts, lives, and minds, and bodies in this place tonight. We won't limit you. We won't restrict you. We will not grieve you. But we will submit ourselves and yield ourselves to you tonight. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place. We, we, we need you. No sense having a church if you're not going to be here. But we know that you're here tonight. And so we just, we submit ourselves to you. You said that you would lead. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led out of the Spirit. So we will follow the Holy Spirit, whatever direction you have for us to go tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was uh, talking with uh, Pastor Mark uh, yesterday. They're up in Estes Park, Colorado. And uh, he was sharing with me uh, that uh, he had uh, injured himself some couple years ago and uh, did a lot of damage to his feet and to his back. And he was doing some construction work and he just really just kind of injured himself. And he said that the pain in his feet, he says on a scale of one to 10, it was an eight many times. And so it was really, really bad. And uh, he said he was uh, laying on his couch the other day and he said it was like a breeze came in and, and touched him. He said every every symptom, every pain that had been there for a couple of years, and everything just, just lifted and was gone, pain free. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, just uh, thank God for things like that. Amen. You say, well, how come it don't happen here? Well, let's just thank you that it, it happened there, and what happens there can happen here. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we're just grateful and thankful that the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. Hasn't changed. And so we're so grateful. Thank you, Lord. Lord, there's nothing too hard. There's nothing too difficult, Father. We don't pretend we understand everything. We don't pretend we know everything. But we know the one who does. Amen. And so we are just uh, grateful and thankful tonight. Holy Spirit, that uh, you're here. And so we, we, just, we just say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, uh, what you're going to do, and, and what you've already done also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just felt impressed to talk a little bit about the anointing tonight. And uh, uh, so why don't we do that? Yes. Uh, go with me to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, please. Isaiah 61, is it? Isaiah 61. So Isaiah is a prophet, and what do prophets do? They prophesy. And so Isaiah is prophesying uh, about something that will happen at, at some point, or it was going to happen, and it did, of course. Uh, and it says in verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. 
He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of, of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now notice the anointing will do, will, will do these things. It'll help people. That's what the anointing is for. So we, we realize that he is talking about Jesus. We understand that. But the anointing that's on Jesus is still also on us. Yeah. All right? And so, uh, again, uh, uh, it says over First John, I guess in uh, chapter 4, chapter 3, it says that, that that anointing that you have received, that, that anointing that you have received, actually, keep your finger here. Let's, let's go over there. Let's go find it. First John, huh? First John, first John. First John, first John. Chapter 2. Okay. First John, chapter 2. Let's, let's look at uh, verse 20. It says, but you have an unction from the Holy One. Now, the, that word unction simply means you have an anointing. If you're a child of God, if you're born again, especially if you're spirit-filled, uh, uh, you have an anointing, all right? And so it goes on to say, uh, you have an, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Well, what do you mean we know all things? Well, the Holy Ghost on the inside of us knows everything. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 27. But the anointing or unction which you have received, everybody say, I have received. I have received. The, anointing the anointing that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost has for me. Has now, see, if you don't receive it, then you don't have it. Okay? But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you have no need that any man teach you. Now, like I've said in the past, you'll run into people. That'll simply say, well, I don't need to go to church. I don't need anybody to teach me. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. Well, uh, again, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, what it is, what it is saying is, is you want to learn from anointed men and women of God. Yes. See, the anointing that's in them will teach us. Yes. Will teach you. Yes. The anointing that they have that's on their lives can teach us. If you're teachable. Okay, not everybody's teachable, and, and we understand that. And sometimes you run into somebody, they, they, they think that they know it all. But if you're open to the Holy Spirit, he wants to teach us. Yes. If we're teachable. And so it says, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not any man teach you, but that same anointing teaches you all things. See, the Holy Ghost will teach us some things. The Holy Ghost can teach us some things if, if we're open to it. Not everybody is open to the Holy Spirit. You see, again, it's, it's up to you what you believe about the Holy Spirit. If you believe it's just something that just doesn't mean much, it, it won't mean much to you. But if, you, if, you're, if you're sincere, you realize that the Holy Spirit is a person and that he is there. I've, I've been, I've been with, with Brother Hagen many, many times many, over the years, and I've, I've watched him pray. And many times he would pray, Lord, he said, I'm praying for a tangible anointing. Well, what's a tangible anointing? What is, what, how would you define tangible? Something you can feel or something you can see. So the anointing can become tangible. It can be felt. And it can be seen. Hallelujah. Now that anointing it is in for many different areas. It can be for anointed to teach, anointed to preach, anointed to pray, anointed to minister, anointed to sing, anointed to play instruments, anointed, I pray, but people get anointed just to hear. Yes. Everybody hears. Yes. Uh, and so sometimes they have selective hearing. <laughs> and uh, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to have selective hearing when it comes to the things of the Spirit. So whatever you think about the Holy Spirit ought to line up to the book. 
See, Jesus acted like the Holy Spirit was real and was a person and was some, somebody that was there. And he said, I'm going to, he said, I, it's, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, then the Comforter cannot come. But I will send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, to be with you. Okay? And, and he will be with you and he will be in you. Now that word uh, Paraclete, uh, uh, Ian has some wonderful teachings on that. It's a sevenfold uh, uh, part of the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, when you begin to realize that the Holy Spirit is really a person, he's really there. And you start talking to him. I didn't say pray to him, I said talk to him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, Heavenly Father. You know, you can talk to God. We can talk about prayer and Wednesday nights, even again this morning. But tonight, we're just we're just talking about the anointings. Sienna was anointed. Okay? She was very anointed. Okay? And uh, you just can't get up there and do that stuff. Unless the anointing is there. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, there, you know, you can, you can have music in church and then you can have anointed music. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Okay? You can have preaching and then you can have anointed preaching. You can have teaching and you can have anointed teaching. Hallelujah. I remember uh, this Brother Hagen. Uh, he, he was a, 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 as he was developing his ministry, uh, he, the Lord uh, said that he was going to stand in the office of the teacher. And he was saying, Lord, not that. I don't want that. He's gonna say, he said, all the teachers that I've ever seen, they're dead and they're boring. And that's what he says. He says, just drive right like chew, chewing on sawdust, you know. And uh, that's what he said. And, uh, but the Lord put that gift of teaching in him, and, and he said he didn't want to use it. He didn't want to stand in that office. He'd rather stand in the office of the prophet or something like that, a little more exciting. And the Lord said, no, I want you to start teaching. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, nobody will get saved if you start teaching. He said, men are saved by preaching. And he said, so, but if I start teaching, nobody, nobody's going to come, nobody's going to get saved. And the Lord said, I want you to start teaching. Mm -hmm. And so he began to teach. He said, all right, I'll prove it to you. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. I'll teach tonight, and you watch. Nobody will get saved. Nothing will happen. So he started teaching, but then the anointing to teach came on him while he was speaking. And while he was speaking, he decided he'd give an altar call just to prove to the Lord that it would work. He said that we gave the altar call. He said, I had more people saved that night than I had under some of the most mighty preachings that I had. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We might get back to Isaiah, hopefully, sometime tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter... I'm sorry, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, not 2 Corinthians. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's start verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you... This is Paul talking to the, the believers at Corinth. Uh, it says, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. Now, Paul was a brilliant, brilliant man. Yeah. He was a gifted orator, and, and he had, you know, he was, he was smart, okay? Mm -hmm. But he says, for I just determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. I was in you, with you in weakness and in fear, and in much trembling. He says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstrations of the Spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I remember Nancy Dufresne was teaching on this, and she brought out something I'd never seen before. And she said, Now let's go back to uh, verse uh, uh, 4, please. <coughs> And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom. Now, he, he could have done that, okay, but he didn't. But he said, but, but, he, but he did speak. But while he spoke, there'd be demonstrations of the spirit and power while he'd be teaching. Now, see, we thought, well, maybe at the end of the service, you know, then he'd minister to people like, like people normally would do. 
But it was while he was speaking under the anointing mm -hmm. that the Spirit of God would begin to move. Mm -hmm. You find that over in Acts chapter 14. Let's go over there. Acts chapter 14. I like it when the Holy Ghost gets to moving and, and you don't have to do anything. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Acts 14, verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb. Remember Paul said, I didn't speak to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstrations of the spirit and power. He was a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same hurt Paul spake. Who sat fastly beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up on thy feet. And he was, he was, and he leaped and he walked. Oh. Now, this happened right during the middle of his message. Hallelujah. <clears throat> right in the middle of, of his message, he's looking out there. Now, now you say, Wonder what he was preaching. <laughs> Why? Faith cometh by yeah. hearing. He heard Paul teaching about healing. When he taught it under an anointing, uh, that began to manifest in that man. He could look at that man and he saw something in that man that what he was saying. Here was a man who had never walked. So when you have never walked in your whole life, we, we were in Africa, in, in Nigeria, back in the jungles, and they, they brought us a young boy. Uh, he may have been about 14 or 15, but he probably weighed about uh, 30 or 40 pounds. And his, his legs were like like broomsticks, just, these, just, they just dangled, just dangled. Why? Because he had never walked. There was no muscles. There was no nothing, okay? But while Paul was speaking, the anointing of God fell uh, on, on those words, and that man began to believe that, well, if God, you know, that he could be healed too, and then Paul just simply looked after him. Paul never even prayed for him. Paul never prayed for him. We, we were in Edna, Kansas number of years ago, there was a lady by the name of Violet, and she was back in the back, and uh, we were praying for the sick, and she was in a wheelchair. She's 93 years old. And she sang, uh, she sang at the back wave, and she said, I want to be healed, I want to be healed. And so they, they wheeled her up and, and came up there, and, and I said to her, I said, Violet, I'm not even going to pray for you. And she just got all sad looking. I said, I'm not even going to pray for you. I just turned around and said, rise and walk in Jesus' name. And, and they just up she came, walked over. She walked around. She said, "Look at me!" You know her 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 kids were there. Look at me! I'm walking. Look at me! I'm walking. Look at me! Look at me! I'm walking. She was so excited, but never did pray for her. Hallelujah. Well, he said, "I'm not speaking with enticing words of men's wisdom." But see, the the spirit of God can demonstrate. Don't you just love that? Spirit of God just can demonstrate. How I remember Greg and I, we, we, when he was here several years ago, we, uh, we we were walking back through through the aisle here, and uh, I think he, I don't know who was holding who up, <laughs> but uh, I remember I, I was just going by people and they just kept falling out of the chairs, <laughs> just kept falling out of the chairs. I said, "Well, glory to God." They wouldn't do anything, just walk them by him. But that anointing gets in there. You say, well, are you somebody special? Yes, I am. Just like you are. I'm a child of God. I'm saved, born again, got the Holy Ghost, full of, full of the Spirit of God. Okay, just like you. So that makes us somebody special. All right? God loves us. Okay, we're the apple of his eye. And so... Uh, you say, well, don't let that go to your head. No, I, I will not let it go to my heart. <laughs> There's a difference. Now go back to Isaiah 61. Verse 1. The Spirit of the, of the Lord God is, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. You have an anointing. There is an anointing on each and every one of us. Okay? You have to receive that anointing. You say, well, I don't know what my anointing is. Well, uh, just receive it. See, God knows what it is. Say, God, whatever you got for me. Uh, you know, people sit there and say, well, yeah, that's true. But in their hearts, they say, well, I don't know what my own thing is. I don't think I have any. But you do. You do. It says over 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that, that the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, are given separately as the Spirit wills. Okay? And so uh, you've got gifts of the Spirit on the inside of you. Okay? 
One of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy, gifts of healings, gift of working of miracles, the gift of faith, gift of the word of knowledge, gift of the word of wisdom, or the gift of discerning the spirits. One of those gifts are in you. Okay? And there's an anointing there. And so, when that anointing is, is in manifestation, now, now look at this. Because I want to I want to take it to a place here tonight. He has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. So there's an anointing to to bring hope and joy to people's lives. Hallelujah. There's people. I mean, uh, there, there's some some ministries you get around. You just you feel like you want to just go crawl in a hole and pull the covers over you. <laughs> but no, there, there's an anointing for good news. You say we're living in a in a in a, in a pandemic. We're living in a time where there's not a lot of good news. There's lots and lots of conflicts going on in the world. A lot of kinds of sickness and disease and all these other things. And there's still good news. God still got good news. Good news for you, good news for me. And so there, you can be anointed to preach the, the good things to the meek. The meek are people who are teachable. All right? And so when you see the word meek, it says Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. That's why God could use him. And he wasn't this little guy like that. He was said that he was the most teachable. He was the most teachable. And so if we're teachable, then God can do something with us. He can, he can fill us and he can use us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. There's an anointing that sets people free. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we, we use that anointing. You know, with, because people get bound up with the devil. I don't believe in devils. Well, then, then he's got you right where he wants you. Yeah. Okay? No, we, we set people free. People come and, and they, they have a bondages, they have the, uh, torments, uh, and we, we set them free in the name of Jesus. There's an anointing to do that. Come out in Jesus' name. And they come out. I tell people, when we pray, uh, something's going to happen. You will be free. That thing will leave. And it's like, oh, they just, before it even happens, it's like they just take a, a big sigh of relief. Well, thank God, you know, yeah. I'm going to be free of this. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so there's liberty to the captive, the opening of prison to them that are bound. There's people that are bound with addictions. They're bound with, with fears, bound with all kinds of different things. Yeah. And there's an anointing to set people free. And you've got... Some of you got that, and some of you, all of you, have got something of this, this ability to do something. You have that in you. Okay? To proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. You say, what does that mean, the day of our vengeance of our God? I have to look at it like this. God, it makes God mad when he sees people sick, yes. his children sick. Yes. It's like when he saw, saw Mark sick laying there on the couch and all this pain, all this agony. You know, it was uh, God took vengeance on the devil and that sickness and disease. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I see you're all excited about that. Well, Mark was excited. Okay. He was excited. You know, you have several years of you know intense pain all of a sudden, just in a moment. Amen. No doctor. No medicine. No chiropractor. Just, just he said, like, a, like God breathed on him. A, a, a breath of air came across him. All of a sudden, he said, all of it just, it just instantly was all gone. Instantly. Oh, yeah. Wait, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, yeah. Now look at verse 3. To an, uh, a point unto them that mourn in Zion. There's some sad people out there. To give them beauty for ashes. See, a lot of, a lot of people just, you know, they're, they're, they're beaten down. Okay? They're hurt. And it says that the, uh, God's got to beauty. Sometimes people think that, 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 you know, that they're just ugly. You know, life has been difficult. But see, the devil's been bad to people. Mm -hmm. God's got you there because there's something you can do. There's something you can say. There's some people, they just have a gift uh, of just walking into a room. And, and, and just as, it's like a light, a fresh air comes in. You think, ooh, glad you're here. Okay? There's other people you think, dear Lord, is it? oh, oh. We have this wonderful lady that calls 
mixed with messages on my answer machine. That's her darling, huh? And she, she, you know, she calls, she calls for prayer, especially when we're not here. But it's like she thinks we're here, and so she talks and she talks and she talks and she talks till my machine stops working. It just, it can't take anymore. It and, and it takes her, you know, fifteen minutes to say goodbye. And, and, and your heart goes out to her, you know, and, and she's calling for prayer, and I, and I do pray for her, okay? And uh, no me, you need to go see that lady sometime. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, okay? <clears throat> Beauty for ashes, okay? The oil of joy for mourning, okay? So you got, some of you got, you got, you got the ability to make people happy, you know? I like to joke around. I, 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 I like funny things. Unfortunately, some of the people that you try to have joke around with, they, they just, they, they, they don't have a much of a sense of, of humor, I find. They say, well, you know, you're supposed to be serious, Pastor Bradley. Well, didn't you read over in Hebrews 1 that Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above everybody? So Jesus is not the sad person we see in all the pictures. When people were getting healed and delivered, he's dancing. I mean, he's shouting. He, he's ecstatic. They're getting free. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's this joy that he said, God, you know, uh, the Bible says that even though we don't see him, see him, we got joy unspeakable and fully glory. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There's just some people, they've got a joy about them. I mean, they're just, they're just, they're just joyful, and you love people like that because they can come in and they, they can they can make you laugh, they can make you smile, they can just drive the blues away. That's a gift. Hallelujah. Glory. <clears throat> the oil of joy for morning and the garment of praise for the spirit of happiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, uh, go with me to Acts ten thirty eight. You're all familiar with this, but with again, Acts ten thirty eight. Wonderful script scripture here. This one always, people find this one, they, they get upset when you read this one because it, it's kicking over sacred cows. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You have to ask the question, why? See, people believe, listen, people believe that Jesus did all these miracles because he was the Son of God. That's what we've been taught. I was taught that. But come to find out, Jesus never healed anybody because he was the Son of God. Because it tells us in Philippians chapter 2 that he laid aside all his mighty power and glory and took on the form of a servant and humbled himself until the death of a man. So he, he left all that behind. Okay. Jesus was the Son of God, but he also said he was the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. And so here we find that the humanity part of Jesus was what the, what the, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, Father God, anointed him with. Yeah. Okay? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Remember we just read that in Isaiah uh, uh, 61 verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Jesus needed an anointing to do whatever he was going to do. And you and I need the anointing to do whatever we're going to do. Yes, we have to have that same anointing. Okay? Now it says he was anointed uh, without, uh, without measure, but indicating to us that we are anointed with measure. Okay? So, but when we all come together, uh, we, 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 that measure gets much fuller. All right? So how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost? So this is what we get anointed with, the Holy Ghost and power. Okay? So there is a power that is on the inside of each of us. Now, the, the, the anointing that you might have is different than the anointing that I might have. Your anointing might not be to minister or to speak. My anointing was never to minister or to speak. I ran from it. I did not want to speak. I didn't like to speak. I didn't like to be up in front of people. I didn't like to talk. You never know that today. 
But that anointing came down over me in a little Pentecostal church, and it changed me. See, the Holy Ghost can still change a person. Nobody laid hands on me. Nobody had a prophetic word over me. Just something came down over me, and I felt it. Remember, my son Greg would talk about this. He's had twice. He's, I think he said twice. He said, I've had this like it was a warm honey, thick. It just come down over his head, come all over. And it changed him. Wasn't in a service. Wasn't having people pray. Just that the, the Spirit of God can change it. I like what Brother Bentley said. God loves us too much to leave us the way that we are. Yes. So we need to be changed. We have to let the Holy Spirit change us. Mm -hmm. And so, again, you say, well, you're just taking away from the miracles. No, we're, we're just telling what the miracles really were. Was the, it, Jesus was the miracle. Now look at this. Look at this. Go with me. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's what it says, right? Now, now go with me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Hallelujah. Where are we at? Mark chapter 5 or is it Mark chapter 6? Yeah, it's Mark chapter 6. I'm sorry. Verse 1. Actually, can we, let, let's go to... Uh, Go to, go to, we're going to come back to this one. We're going to, I want to just do another scripture first before we come back to this one. So go with me to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verse 1. Now he's just been water baptized. The Spirit of God came upon Jesus. All right. In verse 1, Matthew, uh, Luke 4, 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led of the Spirit until the wilderness. Other translations said he was driven by the Spirit. He was, the, the Holy Spirit was just, he was just, just telling me how to go, I, I had that happen to me. When I went to Bible school, I was driven of the Spirit to go. Just driven of the Spirit. And, and I couldn't escape it. I had to go. I just, I had to go. I just couldn't explain it. I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the money. But I had to go. And in the going, uh, God would meet me wherever my need was at. Okay? And so it says that he was uh, uh, led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, and he was tempted of the devil. But look at verse 14. After the temptation, after the hard times, it says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues. Hallelujah. And it says that, and he came to Nazareth, verse 16, where he had been brought up, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he opened the book, look, he found the place where it was written. So he was looking for this verse, okay? His, and he found the place where it was written. This, and he began to read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to, uh, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to recover enough sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it up to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all of them were in the, on the synagogue fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, This day is this, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And they all bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not the son of Joseph, Joseph's son? And he said, And he would say, You surely will say to me this proper physician, heal thyself. And what we heard you do in Capernaum, do also here in that country. And he said, I am saying to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. Now go with me to, we want to read that. Now go with me to uh, uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 1. Hallelujah. Now this will help us. And he went out from thence and came into his own country. Now we, we're re reading what he, we just read. Okay? But it's, we're getting Mark's account of it. And he went into it, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence does this man these things? 
In other words, where did he where did he learn all these things? We know who he is. He never went to school. He never went to seminary. He never went to anything. You know, he didn't even go to our Bible studies. You know, he says, where did he get all these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? So they were familiar with all of the stories, the miracles, the healings, the deliverances of the lepers being cleansed, the dead being raised, the sick being healed, uh, arms growing out, legs growing out, you know, all the different things, and they had heard all these things. Now he comes to his own hometown. And he says, is this, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Josie of Judah and Simon? They were, and are not all his sisters here with us? And they were offended. They were offended. Who does he think he is? He, you know, he, we knew him running around. You know, his nose was running. We know who he is. We know his brothers. We know his sisters. We know his whole family. We know who. Uh, we don't know who his dad was, though. You know, we we've all heard the stories. You know, that uh, you know that Mary was fooling around, and got pregnant by some guy, and. And Joseph, he just said, well, okay, I'll pretend to be the dead. We all know the story because, you know, he's, he's really a bastard. And they knew that. They knew the story. Okay? They also had heard the other story, too, about the angels when he was born. And, but they chose to, this one's much more juicier than the one with the angels, anyway. And so, uh, and they were offended at him. And Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin, and in his own house. And look at verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks, and he healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about to the other villages teaching. Notice, now notice, we were talking about the anointing. There are some places the anointing won't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some places, even Jesus, it said he tried. But he could not do. He prayed. He said, the, the, the another translation said he only healed a few with minor ailments. You know? You know, a sore throat. Maybe a, a, a headache, you know, for a couple of days. It, just minor, just a few minor things. And so, but see, people say, well, Jesus, he, he, he healed people to prove he was the Son of God. He didn't prove it in, in his own hometown, did he? No. See, the anointing doesn't, won't always work. You can't be anointed, but it might not work in every place. We had gone up to, uh, George Moss had, had been here, and, and uh, uh, he walked, you know, he said, can, he, says, he was supposed to be here with us for about four or five days ministering a number of years ago. And somebody asked him to go upriver to a church upriver. And so he said, well, I, I think maybe I should go. And I, I said, well, all right, George, if that's what you believe. So he went upriver to the church, and, and then when he came back, he said, I should never have gone up there. He said, it was terrible, it was hard, hard preaching, hard. And he said, nothing happened. He said, I was so glad to get out of there. And so a couple of years later, they invited my wife and I to come on up and preach in the same church. And I tell you, it is hard. Oh, my goodness, it was hard. Difficult, difficult church. And, and we're, we're used to the gifts of the Spirit, you know, uh, uh, things moving and anointing. It was nothing. It was nothing. And so, uh, you know, we just kind of limped through the service and uh, just got through and, and finished up. Everybody had left the building, but my wife and I, we were up front. And another couple came up and said, would you pray for us? You know, and, and once everybody had left, the anointing fell on us to pray for those people. But see, you know, Jesus, when he raised the, 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 uh, Jairus' daughter, he had to put everybody out. Why? Sometimes you've got to get the unbelief out. Because it, it, it can affect the anointing. You know, it can be very difficult. You know, it, so again, when, when you have an anointing, you have to understand sometimes it might not function very well. Now, we've talked about a tangible anointing. People have a tangible anointing. And so uh, uh, I have met people that uh, they get a tingling in their hand. Their hands begin to burn. Is that, do you get that? I was listening to Nancy Dufresne, and she said it's one of three things. All right? See, she learned, okay? Because she would have that. Then not everybody has that, that tingling in their hands. It'd be nice if we did, but he said it would be one of three things. One, 
It was an anointing you need to pray. Two, it was an anointing to lay hands upon the sick and minister to the sick. Or three, there was angels uh, around that needed to be, uh, you know, ministering spirits needed to be sent forth. And so, but see, you, you run into people, uh, and I have too, and, and they said, Pastor, my hands are burning, my hands are burning. What am I supposed to do? I said, well, you need to find out what it's for. And they went around and laying hands on people and nothing happened. Well, then they're all bummed out, you know, because they're thinking, well, if my hands are burning, people are supposed to get healed. Well, not necessarily. We have that anointing. You see, the anointing will teach you all things. So we need to realize that there could be other things that, that need to be dealt with. Perhaps that anointing comes, you, you need to go pray. Mm -hmm. You need to pray. Okay? And, and so that there's that tangible anointing. I've had tangible anointings, but not in my hands. I, sometimes the anointing gets so strong, it's like I'm almost vibrating, okay? just almost vibrating. I mean, you might not sense it or see it, but I can certainly feel it. But it doesn't happen every single time. The anointing comes to speak. So like the, this morning was a little more difficult. Okay? It was like plowing a field with a lot of stumps in it. Okay? People said, man, that was really good. I don't know. I just thought it was difficult. Now tonight, this seems like it's easy peasy. You know, just get in there and... And, and go with the flow. And so the anointing can be different at, at different times. I think, you know, many of our people, they realize that. It's just, there's just a difference, the different night. And uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't always do the same thing, doesn't always react the same way. And so uh, that, uh, the Spirit of God is, is, wants to do things, but you have to have some, some type of permission has to be open and generally. Now, there, there can be times the Holy Spirit will do some things. If you remember the scripture where there was a man that had the withered hand, okay? And Jesus comes into the synagogue and the, the, the Pharisees and them are all gathered there and, and they, they're going to see, is he going to heal this man? Because they were waiting to pounce on him. And Jesus understood, realized that they were, that was, you know, set up and, and, uh, and he told the man with the withered hand, stand forth, stretch forth thine hand. Okay? And he went ahead and, and didn't say anything about the, the faith of the man. We should have faith to stand up. But he, he may have been a plant. You know, sometimes people leave that. I remember Brother Hagin. You got time for a story? Mm -hmm. Brother Hagin. He said that uh, uh, in, in his earlier years, uh, when he was ministering in, in churches and holding, he, he'd been a surfer usually from, he said, we'd never, I'd never take a meeting less than six weeks. It would usually last six to eight weeks, ten weeks, something like that. And he said one night, uh, some people brought some mentally, you know, challenged people that were, were, were really difficult, okay? And uh, had, had severe problems, put them on the front row. <laughs> Just... Just to mess him up, okay? So, so sometimes people will set you up, okay? And this, was, this was, could have been with Jesus. Apparently, it must have been a setup. But he just said, stretch forth thine hand. And when he did, his, his hand was made, made like the other hand. And it just infuriated. So there's times, there's times that the anointing uh, will override these things. Now, go with me to Acts chapter 13. We've seen this scripture before, but it's, is still worth looking at tonight, Acts chapter 13. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Why don't we start in verse 1? I, I love these verses here. We've taught on them many times. Now there was, verse 1, in the church which was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, such as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, I would just like to stop there. And, and see, they, they had different kinds of church services in, in, in these places. You see, when we go to church, we go to church to receive something. They went to church to give something. Okay? We basically come to church for the Lord to minister to us. This was not that kind of a service. This was a service where they ministered to the Lord. Did you know the Lord has a need to be ministered to. Yeah. That's why we take time. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of churches, they're, they're, they got their three songs and, and, and they're done. So we, we might go 45 minutes an hour. Why? Because we just, we just love to take time to worship and minister to him. Tell him how good he is, how great he is. And 
what wonderful things he's done for us. He is so awesome. And, and as we do these things, then, then what you sow is what you reap also. Hallelujah. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, see, when you start ministering to the Lord, the Holy Ghost can get involved. He said, separate unto me uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein to have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, uh, they laid their hands on them, and they were sent away. Mm -hmm. Now, notice uh, in that verse, verse 2, uh, that uh, how the order is Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul. Now something's about to happen that's going to change everything. Paul's life, Saul's life, is going to be changed dramatically because they come forth and so they, uh, verse 6, and when they had gone through the Isle of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Eliamus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Now he had been filled with the Holy Ghost back in Acts chapter 9 when they laid hands on him and he got filled with the Holy Ghost spoke with other tongues. That's the unfilling of the Holy Spirit. That's what it, when it talks about being full of the Spirit, that's because they spoke in tongues, okay? And so, he said, and, 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 and Saul, who, whose name is Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled, that anointing came on him. Came on, he, he's there to preach, to talk to Sergius Paulus, to preach the good news. But there's this demonic man uh, that is interfering and stopping. We're not told exactly how he was doing it, but he was throwing a hissy fit. And he, he did not want to, you know, because this is going to mess up his, his, his gravy train that he's got going. And so he is withstanding them. Then Paul, uh, Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. That anointing came on him. There, there can be special anointings. Everybody say special anointings. Special anointing. There can come special anointings. We don't, you can't make these things happen. That's right. You cannot do that. I've run into people who say, oh, I can do it every time I want to. Well, you need to be delivered. <laughs> <coughs> these are as the Spirit wills. These are as the Spirit wills. Not, it's not up to us. So if, if we could, we'd, we'd do it all the time. But it's not up to us. It's up to the Spirit. <clears throat> and so that it says that he was filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and he said, O full of all subtlety, all mischief, thou child of the devil, <clears throat> thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not to cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. <clears throat> and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believing, being astonished at the doctrine, it says, now that when Paul and his company loosed from Papos, so on and so forth, <coughs> from this point on, from this point on, with that anointing that came upon Saul, who's now going to become Paul, it's no more Barnabas and Saul, and, or Barnabas and Paul, it's Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> See, the anointing can promote you into a higher place. Mm -hmm. The anointing can, can, can make you go into deeper deeper modes, deeper places. <coughs> Back in Acts 13, 1, they, they were pro certain prophets and teachers. But he was, he was, he, he fitted that. He was a prophet, he was a teacher. But he's, he's going to get promoted into the office of an apostle. Okay? <coughs> Hallelujah. Ian, you got anything you can add to any of this stuff? Yeah, I know you're sitting back there. I looked out and I saw that I didn't see you there. I thought, oh gosh, they all went home. But you came back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That anointing. Come on up. Okay. That anointing that you have received. There's an anointing that God has for you, okay? My wife has, a, has an anointing. You know, she, she, just, there's a piece about her. There's just, she, you know, there's just a real piece about her, okay? 
Kathy O'Hara has an anointing. We've been, we've been working on developing it. She, she's developed into a powerful, powerful speaker and teacher of the Word of God. Why? These anointings that, that we have, they have to be developed. They have to, you know, Ian is a, is a marvelous and powerful praise and worship leader, but it didn't start out, you know, at that level that he's at today. That's what Brother Bentley says about coming here. He says that one thing I love about coming here is I don't have to start at the bottom and keep working my way up and I come in here. He says the congregation here is just at a higher level. And I can start at a much higher level. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you go ahead? Normally I've had a lot to say about this, I just, <laughs> the night I was like, um, I was, my mind went blank when I was like, Ian, do you have anything? And I was like, whoa, there's nothing there right now, but, uh, but praise the Lord, when he was, just, just, as Pastor was just talking there, I was, I was thinking about the anointing, and <clears throat> I did a message on the anointing, um, months ago, and I said something that, at first, it was a little controversial, and I, a couple of people wanted to shoot me after. And <laughs> what I said was that <clears throat> a lot of times we we call things anointed. You know, that was an anointed <coughs> song that you sang tonight, right? You know, that that service was so anointed. And a lot of times we use the anointing in that, in those terms, or the anointing fell on that person tonight. Or came on that person tonight. But when I was doing a study on anointing, what I noticed was the only, just about the only thing, the main thing that was ever anointed in the Bible was people. Mm -hmm. People to, to minister. Uh, the priests and the, and, the, and the Levites and those who were, who were doing the service of the Lord. They were the, what was anointed and then there was, a, there was a few instruments that were anointed too. But mainly it was people that were anointed. And, and it, was, it, was, <clears throat> it wasn't something that fell on them on certain times. Certain times they were anointed, other times they weren't anointed, and so on and so forth. But they were always anointed. Because when they got, when they got initiated into the priesthood, and that blood was put on their right ear lobe, and their right thumb, and their right toe, Right? They're, they were anointed to hear. Mm -hmm. Pastor said sometimes we have to be anointed to hear. And that is, that is, uh, is especially important. Yeah. To be able to hear mm -hmm. the word of the Lord. You know, they were anointed on their right thumb. And your, and your thumb and your hand are what? It's what, it's what, you, it's what you outreach with. You, you, you both give and receive with your hands, right? And so you're, you're anointed to give and to receive. Everything you set your hand to is anointed, amen? There's an anointing on what you set your hand to, right? And then their right toe was, was anointed. And so everywhere your feet touch, everywhere you walk, everywhere you step, you're bringing that anointing to that place. You're taking ground in the spirit when you, when you walk in faith into an area, right? You're taking that area. So you are anointed. You're anointed when you wake up in the morning. You're anointed when you lay your head down to sleep at night. Amen? And so you don't have to ever doubt whether you are anointed. You are anointed. Now, <clears throat> Nellie said, uh, mentioned that the Spirit, she said, the Spirit's not just upon you, He's in you. Right? And that's true. There's, the Spirit is both. He's in you all the time. If you if you are born again and if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have and you have received him, he is in you all the time. That's why you can speak in tongues whenever you want, right? Because he's always in you. And he's in you to change you if you'll allow him. He's in you to to cause you to become more spiritual and less fleshly. That's really what he's in there to do. You know, his job inside you is not to do, necessarily to do great 
works of power and miracles. No, inside you, he's, he's meaning to change you. But when he comes upon you to do something that, that you cannot do on your own, that is when he's upon you to, to do, to work in power and miracles and signs and wonders. And so there, there's, different, there's different ways that the Spirit moves. You know, sometimes the Spirit is hovering over the face of the waters in the Bible, right? Other times the Spirit is the light and the candle that lights the, the, the place uh, before the throne of God. And so the Spirit has many functions, but He can be... He can be with you, he can be upon you, and he can be in you all at the same time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But he is the anointing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah. He is the anointing. That's why when I write the word anointing, I put a capital A. Yeah. Because uh, it, you read that scripture. It says, the anointing that is within you, it teaches you all things. Yeah. Well... Can this teach you? Anointing literally means oil, but can this teach you? If I, if I put this on my forehead and I put a dot on my forehead, can that teach me? No, it's not. It's, it's the Holy Spirit who is the anointing of God. He is in you, and so you can do all things. Amen? It says that the, the Holy Spirit searches all things even the deep things of God. And he's here to reveal those things to you. And that's how he begins to teach you, is to reveal all the things that have been freely given to you by God. Amen? The Spirit is here to, to reprove us, to correct us, not condemn us, but convict us. You see the difference? If you're feeling condemned, it's not the Holy Spirit. If you're feeling convicted, then you have to start to look and say, what, what am I being convicted about? Because he's here to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Those three things, part of his main mission in your life. But he is the anointing. And so sometimes we overcomplicate the gifts of the Spirit. We overcomplicate and we say, you know what? God's used me in gifts of healing, but, but He's never used me in working of miracles. And He's never used me in the gift of faith. So I guess I'll stick to what I know, the gift of healing, and I'll stick to that or I'll stick to this. It's the same Spirit that does all those gifts. The same Spirit that does one does the other. Yeah. And so... You're limiting yourself and you're limiting him when you say, this is my niche and this is what I can do, but I, I don't do anything else. The Lord doesn't use me. He uses Pastor in that way. He uses Nellie in that way. He uses Christina to prophesy. He uses this. No, he can use you for any of those things. Amen. Amen. And so personalizing the Holy Spirit is very important for the body of Christ. You pers you've got to start personalizing the Holy Spirit to you. Do you know what I mean by that? The Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit has anointed you. Amen? And, and maybe this is a common theme and when, when I talk. is But I, I'm, I want to encourage the average Christian who doesn't necessarily be up here on the platform, who's not necessarily up here at the pulpit, who's not necessarily even in, in a position that they would, that would be considered um, uh, something that everybody looks to that position. Maybe you're just sitting in a seat Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, but the Lord has you on his mind too. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's, that's what um, I really feel before this next move of God happens, I feel that people need to understand their identity and understand their place in the body of Christ. 
Amen. Paul talked about it as everybody is a member and every member has different functions. And the thing is, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then it hinders what I'm doing. Yeah. It hinders what pastors doing. It hinders what other people are doing. You may think that what you do doesn't matter. But if you are a hand or a foot or an ear or, or a toe or a liver or a kidney, you matter. You matter. It doesn't. Have you ever stubbed your little toe? Oh, yeah. you, you, you might as well just lay down on the floor because it's so painful. That one little thing is so painful that you walk with a limp for the rest of the day, maybe the rest of the week because of that one little toe. There's nothing that's insignificant. There's nothing that's not important. And there's nobody here today, if you are born again, and filled with the Spirit. Can everybody say that you are? Amen. Just raise your hand. You're born again. You're filled with the Spirit of God. Then you are anointed. You are anointed to do the things that uh, these scriptures that have been brought up here tonight. And I always like to bring, there's, <clears throat> I, I'm not going to do it all tonight because I, I didn't have my scriptures handy. But, when, when you go through the different Gospels where Jesus um, basically commissioned his disciples to go out and demonstrate the kingdom of God, it, they don't, there's no one Gospel that says it the way, this way, but if you put all of them together, he said that you are anointed to heal all diseases. And sick, all sicknesses and diseases. And if you put them all together, then you are anointed to cast out all demonic spirits and unclean spirits. There's no one that's, there's no one's gospel that says that all together, but if you put together what he said in Matthew, what he said in Mark, what he said in Luke, then that word all becomes really important. I love that word all. It says that he is blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Amen. 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 It says that we have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. All. So if he says you can, can, can heal every sickness through the power of God, not you, the power of God in you can heal every sickness. There's nothing left out in that. That's what's great about that word all, is it means the same in Greek as it means in English. All means all. And when he said you can cast out every demon, every evil spirit, the disciples choked when they found one that was deaf and dumb. They choked on it. They couldn't do it. They, they fretted and they worried and they had anxiety over this deaf and dumb spirit. And Jesus said, you wicked and perverse generation, how long must I, how long must I, I'd be with you. Jesus didn't say, well, yeah, I guess that one was too hard for you guys. He said, you wicked and perverse generation. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? And so, if the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, if the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach the gospel to the poor, to, to set the captives free, amen, do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? What we sang at the end of, of our worship and at the, or at the beginning of our worship and at the end of our worship, the same song, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the sick, to set the captives free. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And if you have the confidence to sing that part, then when you look at anybody here and you say, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame, because the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen? You have the confidence to say that to anyone in this room. Praise the Lord. Sir, in the back there, I don't even know who you are, but you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen? You're going to be different when you leave. And if you have sickness in your body, if you're bound and tormented in your mind, the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same, and you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God, I just put my faith to those words. What's your name, sir? Sorry? Renjen? Wow, I haven't heard that one before. In Jesus' name, Renjen, you are healed of every debilitating sickness and disease in your body right now in Jesus' name. By the power of, of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit here tonight, you are healed in Jesus' name. I proclaim and decree that you are healed of every sickness, of every disease, of every tormenting spirit, of every, of every unclean spirit that would attack you, that would attack your life, that would speak lies to you in Jesus' name. I shut their foul mouth now in Jesus' name. I command them to leave you now in Jesus' name. Anything that opposes the plan of God for your life, right now I I, I cause it to cease and desist its mission against you in the name of Jesus. You are free. You are free in Jesus' name. I don't know anything about you. I don't know if that even meant anything to you. But you're not going to leave here the same way that you came in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Deborah. I want to pray for you. Shokora masodra di to kora matyoto rabasho. Yada raboko dori masodri yato rabasho di kari ondo raboso dara to kari anda rama. Rodi yada da kora masodri na miyano rama sotra tu kori anda rama sotra yada. Pori ando raboso dori to kari matosha. Spoke tonight about. The, the healing power of God, the anointing to heal, to set free, to deliver. And in Jesus' name, I know you've been afflicted in your body. I know you've been afflicted in, in, in all kinds of areas of your body. In Jesus' name, I just speak healing and comfort to you right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, begin your work inside of her, changing those things that need to be changed in Jesus' name, right down to the cellular level, her chromosomes, her genes, her DNA even, in Jesus' name. Change it by the power of God. But in Jesus' name, all those problems that she's suffering, all those, all those diseases in her body, in Jesus' name, I command them to go. Go, devil, go. Go, sickness, go. Go infirmity, go from her now in Jesus' name. I decree she's healed, she's whole, she's set free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tissue is, is, is free in Jesus' name. Her cells are clean in Jesus' name and clear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Where am I going? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Muscles. Skin. Bone, teeth in Jesus' name. All her physical parts in the name of Jesus. Free, clear, healed in the name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Kathy, Kathy Corey, Kathy Morehouse. We've been called both things at this church. You're free in Jesus' name. You're free in Jesus' name. You've had a long, long time of being a prisoner in your own body, of things tormenting you physically. Jesus' name, I proclaim freedom for you tonight and always in the name of Jesus. Even headaches, even, even back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain in Jesus' name, leg pain, Go from her in Jesus' name. Breathing. Breathing. Let her breathe well. Let her sleep soundly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let her body be clean and clear. Let her get a clean bill of health every time she goes in Jesus' name. I thank you. Right down to the cellular level of her body, Lord. Change those chromosomes, those DNA if you need to. She is going to be a whole person, whole, 
whole, free from pain in Jesus' name, free from even discomfort in your body in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. She's going to have the be she's going to be the best and she's ever been in her life. The best days for her in Jesus' name. Coming up, not behind you, but ahead of you. The best days for you physically, mentally, spiritually in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you, do you agree with that tonight? Do you, do you believe that tonight? Is the power of God able to make your, your, your end be better than your beginning? Yes. To make your days get better? It says that the light gets brighter for the righteous. Amen? Each day gets brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. Krista, you are healed. Krista, these symptoms are going to fall off you. And one day you're going to just look and go, hey, I'm not even shaking anymore. I don't, what happened? I don't even know when this stopped, but it will stop. Yeah. In Jesus' name, just one day you're going to wake up and go, I don't even have this, those things anymore. They're not even there anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one day, it'll just dawn on you. I haven't had these symptoms, and I don't even know when it stopped, but it stopped in my body. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jan, you're healed. You're healed. And if there's something keeping you up at night, that's going to stop in Jesus' name. That's going to stop in Jesus' name. There's going to be peace in your life. Peace in your life. More peace than you had before. Amen? An increase of, of peace and uh, uh, even, even thoughts and memories are going to become clearer. Since that stroke, they're going to get clearer. They're not going to get dimmer. They're going to get clearer in Jesus' name. There's going to be a strength to your mind. There's going to be a strength to your body that's going to surprise you. In Jesus' name, it won't make sense, but it will surprise you because God's doing something in you. I firmly believe that, that God doesn't just want to move us into a new building. He wants to move us into new bodies, new minds, new situations, new jobs if necessary, new financial plateau, no, not plateaus, financial levels in Jesus' name. He doesn't just want to move us into a building. He wants to move us up, up, up in the spirit, up in, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You believe that? Believe that? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's good I didn't have notes because I wouldn't have gone there if I had had notes. Sometimes the notes need to just go away. And even all the 500 scriptures... And just let the Spirit of God do what He's going to do. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Mike here, he had had awful leg problems for a long time, and he couldn't wear his boots, and he just wanted to wear his boots. He used to go, oh, Lord, I just want to wear my boots again. His, his, his leather boots. Hallelujah. And praise God. You've got your boots, and, and now I pray right now in Jesus' name that, that, that that's great, but we want more. Oh, yes. We want more. We want more health in your body. We want more blood flow through your body. We want more in Jesus' name so that there will be no pain and discomfort, and, and, and there will be normalization to your body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I could probably pick out everyone here tonight. You probably all have, have stuff you need prayer for. If there's anyone right here tonight who's, who just doesn't want to let this night go by without being prayed for, you know, I don't want to take up too much time, but if there's somebody right now who says, pray for me right now, I need it. Help me, Jesus. I'll pray for you right now. Hallelujah. If not, we'll move on to the next thing. Praise God.
Sandy, yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for my sister Sandy. And she gives <clears throat> she gives us great joy on the stage sometimes because she will dance before the Lord and, and we love people who do that. And the Lord loves people who do that. And the Lord loves people who just love on him. And uh, in Jesus' name, God, I just pray for complete and total health and healing in Sandy's body right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for righting all that is wrong in her, Lord God, even to the root of the problem, Lord, whatever's causing pain, discomfort and hurt, whatever's causing her to, <clears throat> to, uh, to falter in her body, Lord God. Any dis-ease, any discomfort, any infirmity in Jesus' name, I command it to go from her now in the name of Jesus. I command it to leave her now in the name of Jesus. And I pray for her mind, and I pray peace for her mind, and the stress of life, and the things that are, that are weighing down on her in Jesus' name. I release you from those tonight. I let the blessing of God fall upon your head right now and drive out those worries, those concerns, and those fears, and those torments in you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I pray for doors to open for you. I pray for doors to open for you. Good doors. Good doors. And the wisdom to walk through them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can't make pick up the offering real quick. I was listening to a uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, Bible preachers um, online, and he made three points to a sermon, and it, he said, uh, "Tithe, uh, number one." Number two, stay in the secret place of Psalm 91. And number three, use your authority. And, uh, and when I heard him preach these points, the Spirit immediately said to me, if you don't tithe, you can't come into the secret place because you haven't set your love on him. And he said, you can't use your authority because you're not really in covenant with him. Because when you tithe and give offerings... You open a portal of heaven over you. You have an open heaven. You have certain rights. You have tithers' rights. You have, um, <laughs> I'll say, clout in the spirit yeah. because God knows that you're devoted to Him. There's a difference. You know, tithing won't get you to heaven. Getting born again will get you to heaven. You know, the thief on the cross went to heaven. He never tithed. But when you tithe, you're, you're taking a portion of your energy, your blood, sweat, and tears, you know, whatever you put in to get that money. It, it's a part of you, just like your body, soul, and spirit, because you work to get it. Mm -hmm. It's part of your life energy, life force. And so, you know, um, when we give what is precious to the Lord, he notices. He, he sends angels who record what you give to him. Mm -hmm. he, he sees everything that you've done for him. Out of love and obedience, especially if it's above the tithe and it's an offering, and you'll you'll reap uh, rewards on that. But you know, when when you give with all your heart, you know, a hilarious, joyful giver. There's something about that that breaks the enemy's platforms, where you have the authority to say, "No, you don't, devil. Not in my watch. No, you don't." And, and you have authority. And that's in Psalm 91 too. You will trample on serpents and scorpions. You know, and they're under your feet. So, um, you know, let's give with passion. That, amen. You know, amen. Give with passion. And I guarantee you that your level of authority will go up. Your level of love for the Lord, your level of long, full life, all the promises of God in Psalm 91, that when you're in trouble, he'll hear you. You call on him, he's right there. And he'll sense the presence of God like nothing else. So let's do it with all of our hearts, to the best of our ability, in faith and obedience.
Let's hear what the Spirit is saying and give it unto the Lord. Okay, everybody can put up your hand if you need an envelope. And I keep forgetting to say that, but if you need an envelope, put up your hand and we'll just take time to get the envelopes out. And, and God will bless you and give you a new spirit of authority and give you a new ability to abide and dwell and live and make your habitation the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can resist. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you can pass the plate. Mm -hmm. Father God, we just set our hearts to give unto you what you are worthy of, the praise you are due, our tithes, our offerings you are due. We set our hearts to dwell in the secret place. We set our hearts to rise up in the authority of the Spirit and be all that you've called us to be. And we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, glory to God, if anybody wants more prayer, we're here to pray for you. Yep.